All right, in the studio right now, and actually joining us in here is uh, is Marcus Phillips from uh, Utica Daily News. How you doing, man? Hey. Uh, and Congressman Michael R. Curie. How are you, sir? Good. How are you this morning? Good. Um, lots. There's a lot going on. Sure is. I just heard. I heard two reports. Maybe you can tell us where we're where we're at. Um, coming in this morning on IBX, I heard that gas prices have been on a steady decline, hmm. um, and and we've hit. Basically a plateau right yeah, now. Yeah, the whole month of July. Yeah, um, and the no, no, nothing in sight in terms of uh, of increases. Yet ABC News on this station just reported a few minutes ago they're about ready to go up. Uh, are you hearing anything? Are we gonna, or is you know, it just a crapshoot? I don't know. You know, one of the things that that that's troubling, and, and one of the things that we're always concerned about is the the whole factor of. It's not even supply demand so much as it is the the investors who are buying futures and gas prices right. and, and oil and that's one of the real problems you know and, and and so here we are everyone's concerned about cutting back on the amount of gas that we use uh, and yet that's not even the thing that's driving prices it's it's the allowing speculation in those areas and that's one of the things I think we need to look at and every time you know we in Congress look at it you know there is all kinds of pushback from the uh, you know from the investment industry because right. obviously you know the markets they want to continue to do yeah. that. Uh, it was actually supposedly bad when we went down. So I mean, we were down a buck, buck fifty, right, for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's not a good thing. As uh, it was, as, it was certainly good for the consumer. It was great for the consumer, yeah. and that's one of the things. You know, I mean, that's one of the the tax breaks that you know that the middle class get. You know, when when gas. I mean, it's got to the point where we're so dependent on gas, right. whether we like it or not, that when the gas prices go down, it's a good thing. And that's why, although there is a huge benefit in terms of adding to the gas tax because we get to use that money to, to fix our roads we we are not doing it you know despite the fact that what we call the highway trust fund is is depleting we're not doing it because that's one of the few advantages when when gas prices go down for the middle class right. uh, uh today let's talk about a story that's in the news today uh, uh od broke a story uh concerning uh, roan destito um and i think you were Someone from your office was quoted in, in that story. I just wanted to get your opinion. My my take on, uh, and for those that don't know the story, apparently during Obama's inauguration, uh, Roanne used uh, about $1,300 in campaign funds right. to uh, go to the inauguration. I believe it handled uh, transportation and hotel. And hotel. Um, everybody, my take on this um, is a little different than everybody else. Everybody's like, well, I don't think that's a big deal. My whole thing is don't you feel that at this point and in this economy that we would be as politicians it would be to move forward it would be a positive thing to say um it's kind of a gray area i don't think it's it i guess what she did is not against no rules and regulations but isn't it kind of a just a a sore subject that you wouldn't want out there and for thirteen hundred dollars wouldn't you try to uh, wouldn't you try to avoid that story? No, I, I mean honestly, I don't think so. I mean, the purpose of the uh, you know the, the the money, the campaign money, is to use for political purposes, right? Um, and clearly, I mean, the, the, I can't think of a more political purpose than you know than that. I mean, she was uh, invited to go; she wanted to go. I think it would it benefits you know it benefits her constituents in that she's able to be there uh, to meet people who eventually can help her to to represent her area. And I think it's an important thing. I mean, one of the things that, and I'll speak now from, you know, I'll put my political yep. hat on, is that, you know, there are so many expenses that that people in elected office have to, you know, there are so many events, you, you know, people don't realize how many events we get invited to, how many things that, you know, how many contributions we're expected to make, how many things that people like us to, right. to, to go to, and there are huge expenses in that, and, you know, we don't get reimbursed for those things, those are things we have to either pay out of our pocket or use our, our, our campaign uh, funds for, so, you know, again, th- there's nothing that I think of that's more political than than that and that's the purpose of the account so there's nothing illegal about it and i think that you know um from a, a perspective of an elected official that's what's expected all right uh i i think that that was such an event that most people would would have liked to have been it's like going to the the super bowl i mean going to that inauguration right. was like going to the super bowl and i think it's easy for people to say well you know you wanted to go there it was a great event to go to and it's almost like we all do i guess it's okay for us when we do it Say, well, we took a trip to New York City, and I made sure I purchased a few. I, I shouldn't talk about that, should no, I? No, What are you talking I about? I made sure I purchased a few <laughs> items oh. so that it becomes a tax deduction. Oh. So it's kind of the same type of thing. But when a, when a, when we as, as constituents do it, 
Uh, I guess it's okay, but God forbid if a politician well, I'm not does. Yeah, anymore, so I don't have yeah. to worry about. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> listen, you tell me that. Yeah. I listen, if I go on admission. a trip and we're claiming it, it is a claimable trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, you. Make sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you have, Marcus? You have any? Uh... Um. Yeah. One, well, one thing I wanted to ask about is healthcare because sure. it's in the news now. Um, all healthcare all the time. All healthcare all the time. Yeah. No, but the the reason I, I want to come from a different um angle. You're you're up for election in 2010 right now the last election was close and um it was oneida county voted for john mccain so you you won a traditionally republican district in a close election but democrats came out a lot when i was reporting for the od there was a lot of first-time voters a lot of young people and people that haven't voted in a while um voting democrats now you voted against democrats on climate change Mm-hmm. And a lot of people's perception is that blue dogs are holding up health care, which is like the co- coalition that you're part of. Right. So are you guys worried or are you worried particularly that Democrats won't come out to the same extent in the next election that they came out in last election? I mean, that that's that's, you know, a million dollar question from a political perspective. And, you know, it's so hard to judge the last election locally. Um, uh, President Obama won my congressional district, lost Oneida and Herkimer County, our area, um, pretty handily. Uh, I won Oneida County. I can't really, honestly, we can't figure out exactly what where the trends were and why they were as they were. So I fall back on what, what do I think is best for our district. And I look at it this way, you know, I mean, I don't represent San Francisco. I don't represent the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I represent upstate New York. And the climate change bill was not good for our district. It was not good for New York. I mean, just to give you one one specific, New York has a great deal of uh, hydropower. Um, it's what we call old hydropower under the cap and trade bill, which means because it was created, you know, 50 years ago, we don't get credit within the cap and trade scheme of things for it. Um, so it doesn't benefit New York. I mean, there were so many things in that bill. We already are a part of what's called Reggie, which is the northeastern uh, cap and trade zone. We already have a sort of cap and trade here. That's why our power is so high. Upstate New York pays 9.33 cents per kilowatt hour for power for electricity. New York City pays 20.5 cents per kilowatt hour. That's dramatically higher than the rest of the country because we're already in this regional cap and trade. So what's going to happen after cap and trade? Our, our power is going to go up. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And, and I say this all the time. People say, oh, we're going to lose a certain number of jobs, but we're going to gain them. My experience is always we lose the jobs here in upstate New York and they're gained down in Texas or in California or in Florida. We never see the, the jobs recreated that we lost. And that was very problematic for me. I I was very concerned with that. I think the cost of power for us is going to dramatically go up. And and frankly, I don't think we can afford that. So that's why I voted against the the climate bill. I just didn't think it was good. And I have to tell you, that's from a political or from a from a policy perspective then i listened to my constituents our calls were coming in about 20 maybe 30 to 1 against the climate bill Mm. our local calls i mean it wasn't even you know like 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 healthcare. they're about 50 50 um not that Uh, they were just dramatically against it and then when when i balanced the two i mean it was a no-brainer for me in terms of where i was going to be on the bill how do we uh, how do how do we go through? Uh, I I think we can all agree healthcare is a is a major problem in the country. Yes, insurance major problem in the country. Um, how do we come up? I know Obama's trying to come up with um, uh, what's the plan going to be. 